Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. This is episode number five in the Craft Fair Booth Review Series. I'm about to go on an in-depth journey through a real craft fair booth to analyze ways that this vendor is doing well and that they should continue doing, and then also identify some areas of improvement where they can level up their booth. Now, I want you to stick with me through this journey. There's going to be 10 different segments that I'll go through and keep your booth in mind as you watch this video so that you can make improvements to your booth as well. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, and for today's episode, we are looking at Ashlyn's booth and Ashlyn's business is Maj Pyrographics. And she was originally from Tennessee, but now based in Georgia. So you might see her at some Georgia shows if you're down there. Also, she's very, very active on social media. So as you can see, the handles are posted and be sure to give her a follow, a subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, she does a lot of posts where she shows her artwork being made in real time. So uh, very cool to see the process and how she does all of her work. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. Before we take a look at her outdoor booth that we have here, uh, she did include a short video clip of her booth. So we're going to do that first before we uh, do the still frame photos here. So let's take a look at her booth. Um, this is an outdoor setup, I believe a 10 by 10 tent. And um, we'll kind of hit on a couple of things here. I'm going to go rapid fire on this and uh, just point out some stuff in the video real quick. All right, here we go. Okay, so First things first, uh, she has her hats displayed in a really creative way with the rope. Um, I do like that. Now, she does have a sidewall on her canopy, which is good because um, it gives like a nice solid backing color behind all the items. And you can see these hats are a bunch of different colors. So it's nice to have the predominantly white color behind it. Um, if you have a solid color all the way through and it doesn't have the the like see-through windows i would uh, switch to that because the windows can be a little bit distracting it kind of breaks up that solid color that's been uh working for you so let's keep going here okay and then she has some wood burnt uh looks you know cuts of wood here and these stand out pretty well against the background, so that's nice. You know, I would say that these are displayed pretty well. You can see there's various hooks keeping these secure on a windy day, things like that. They're not going to fly everywhere. And uh, we'll keep going. Now I should stop for a second because uh, so far I haven't seen prices, right? So no signage and no prices so far. But that's just one side of the booth, so we'll keep going. All right, and then up here, I don't know if you guys caught that, is there's various hats that are in each of these slots here. This display, like, it is serving its purpose where, you know, the, the bill and, like, the front of the hat are pointing outwards. And, you know, there's probably, like, a different design on each hat. But the display is, like, kind of restrictive, you know what I mean, where... It's just like a little bit tight and um, the products, you know, they don't really have breathing room, I guess you'd say, you know. So we have seen in previous videos people that hang the hats from like the canopy itself of the tent. And um, I would probably try to do both, you know, so that you're like catching people both ways so that you have this nice structured display. And, you know, it kind of keeps things tidy. But then I would also grab a couple of them and just have them hanging like from the, the top of the canopy and uh, give people not only a second chance to see them, like by having two different displays, um, but also giving people the different eye levels to look at, you know. So this is doing good for vertical space, you know, from ground up. But um, by having, having them hang from the top, that would also just provide yet another element at the booth, you know, so just something to consider. All right, we'll keep moving really quick. She panned across that um, pay table. We're going to take a look at this really quick. Okay, so her pay table here, you don't have to get super fancy with it, of course, because it's just, you know, it's not meant to be the star of the show by any means. 
Um, but I would go ahead and just throw some kind of a basic uh, tablecloth over this, um, mainly just to hide like the container underneath or whatever you want to put underneath. You know, that, that'll be like a nice spot to just uh, have stuff hidden away, you know, if you need to a box or whatever or a tote. Um, so yeah, I would go ahead and put like a really, really basic tablecloth over this just to make it look just a little bit nicer, but also to have that, you know, hiding space for yourself to work with. Otherwise, okay, you got the cash box back here. You have a sign that looks like it goes to your socials. It looks like that's Instagram, that this one's TikTok. So I think these are actually just, um, you know, social QR codes. And then over here, I'm willing to bet that these are probably pay codes, you know, so if people want to pay by PayPal or Venmo or however you have it set up, that's probably what's going on over here. You know, but then you also you have the cash box for your standard cash sales. All right. So we'll keep going. All right. So we're getting our first look at the right side of the booth. So one thing to point out as we panned from left to right is that you don't have a backing on the canopy. So I wonder if it was like strategic, like sometimes it'll actually literally depend on like the weather. So like if the wind is moving in a certain direction, if you have your canopy closed in on three sides, it can almost be like <laughs> just launching your tent into the sky, basically, you know, just begging for a disaster. So maybe it was just a strategic move with the weather that day. But, um, I, I do wonder why you have, um, the back open, um, it is buying you extra room, you know, so where the booth is and where the chairs are, are well beyond like where the tent backing would be, you know, so maybe it was just a space thing too, to make the inside of the tent more breathable. So there is no right or wrong when it comes to this method, especially like if you look at this craft fair, like you can tell the people are like really spaced out you know, the vendors. So they clearly had room to kind of push those chairs out and make the inside more roomy. So this is a nice thing. Um, you know, just kind of consider this when you're out at an outdoor show, a lot of times there's bonus room, bonus space. So, um, think about what it can do for the inside of your booth by utilizing the space around your booth. All right, so again, we're moving on to this side here. By the way, nice tablecloth. I like the stretch tablecloth. Very sleek, very clean. Good job on having a solid color as well because if you look at these items, these items could not stand out more from that tablecloth. So very, very good staying away from any kind of a textured tablecloth. You don't really want that. Um, the items themselves... Maybe I would consider a riser for these, you know, so get these up a little bit higher, have, have these on a riser, and then that way you kind of have uh, some verticality going on. But again, we haven't seen pricing or signage yet. We're going to keep going. Uh, nice display here. Oop, there is a sign up here and it says studs eight. Okay, so she has, you know, I would assume those are earring studs. So those are um, named and then priced up here probably a bit more, but we're just cut off, you know, so we'll keep going. Good contrast, by the way. So using a black display and um, the items are on like a beige or a tan backing. So I like that contrast. It's making those items pop against that dark display. So you want to keep that in mind too, is your color contrast. Always use colors that are going to make your items pop against whatever's behind them. Okay. So good job on that so far. And then, okay, here we go. Here's the big sign, right? So we have keychains, five, lanyards, 14, bookmarks, seven, themed coaster sets, a set of four. Looks like it ranges between 18 and, 18 and $24, depending on the set. And then the themed spoon sets, a set of three, which we saw back there, those guys back there. Um, those were marked as 19. Okay. So good job. I like that sign. It's, I like what you did here, by the way, with the colors too, because if this was all one color, like if everything was pink, those prices probably wouldn't stand out as much, you know, like each element wouldn't stand out as much. So I really like what you did with the three colors here, the pink to describe the item, the green for the price, which makes sense having green. And then, um, if there's any kind of, um, you know, special 
thing that needs to be pointed out, like if they come in a set, okay, now that's white, that's a third color. So this was a really, really nice sign. Very basic, you know, but it doesn't have to be super crazy, you know, but um, very good execution on how that is presented. We'll keep going here. Now we have a table runner, right? So this table runner, I would guess, is probably about three feet wide maybe a 36 inch wide runner um, has her logo on it. So, so you can see the, uh, you know, Maj uh, pyrographics and then um, underneath really nice thing too. I think I've pointed this out in a video before, but um, it says wood burned, I think art. It's kind of cutting off there, but I think it says wood burned art. Um, this is a nice thing to put onto your runners because if it's just the business name alone, it might not really hit home with people, you know, but if you have your business name plus what you do, that just kind of sticks. It, 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 it makes it more memorable. It's easier to remember what the vendor does. Okay, so continuing to look up now, these are just laying flat on the table, which normally, you know... Uh, some people are kind of picky about, you know, so some people don't want stuff just straight up laid down on the table, but you've offered enough verticality and displays with other items that I think this is fine. You know, it's fine. Looking up over here, we have the keychains. I would probably stain the display even darker than what it is because it is a little bit distinguishable between the items and then the display you know there's some difference there but it's but it's kind of close too you know and the more that you can make the items stand out against what they're being displayed on the better you know so just something to consider but the display itself really nice you know obviously this re uh, rotates and revolves around and people can check out all the designs on that rack and we'll keep going and Okay, we have, looks like our final display over here. Again, I would say that I would make the display much darker, much darker. I, even like, even something like this, like this dark, or um, this would be okay too, you know? But um, clearly the items are like a very, very light color. So, um, you know, I would just make them stand out and pop even more and go with a dark display with the light items. But all in all, yeah, I'd say that you you have a nice setup here. You know, there's, um, we touched on a lot of different things. And if we take a look at the setup as a whole, I think you're doing a lot right. And by the way, you know, I really don't touch on the items themselves in these videos, but uh, the quality of your work is exceptional. It's very nice, you know, and sometimes the items just speak for themselves, you know, so in this situation where your items are, you know, very visually appealing, you don't want to go overboard with displays and, you know, making the booth really, really technical and crazy because, um, you know, you want the items to do the talking, you know, especially when they're very appealing like this. So, um, very good, very good job. Now let's go ahead to our normal structure that we do in these videos. And we're going to start to break down, the 10 different elements that we talk about in the review videos. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is displays. All right. So let's dive into this booth here. We're going to zoom in a little bit and kind of move around. And the displays in this setup are predominantly the same that you had in the other, like the video. So we have this over here that we touched on, and then you have the keychain rack that swivels um the hat over here is different we didn't see that before so you know you have the mannequin head and then you have the hat on there i do like that i really like that because we touched on we touched on this display over here for the hats and this is a good example of why i think this this display is it's okay you know what i mean like it's it's solid but it could be better because if you're looking at the booth from the visitor's point of view like we are now you know you're kind of just getting you can you can barely barely tell that there's hats in here you know so i don't know if they make these kinds of displays like clear 
you know, where it's just like a clear plastic or something like that, even that would be good because from this angle, you'd be able to clearly tell that there's like hats in there, you know what I mean? Instead of just the bills hanging out. So uh, just something to consider with this display. Also, we touched on the fact that it would be cool if, you know, you had a couple of them, just maybe one here and one here, like when people like walk in or whatever, um, that would be kind of neat. Or even if they were just like hanging down, like over the banner, that might be kind of cool too. But uh, just think about the different ways that you can utilize like the baseball hats. You know, I feel like there's, I feel like there's a little extra opportunity there. Okay. And then this display, I believe is also the same one from the video that we watched where it's the black um, backing and you have this for earrings and necklaces, it looks like. Okay. And then there are a couple baskets. Um, these baskets, the blue and the white plastic, I would swap out with maybe like a wicker. A wicker would look good because you have a lot of like woodwork and you have like a lot of like natural feel. And so the plastic feels a little bit out of place, you know. So um, maybe I would just consider swapping out to a wicker basket or some kind of a small wooden basket that doesn't um, steal the show from what is contained within them. All right. And then over here. I'm going to back out a little bit. Okay. So then over on this side, we have a couple of really big like wire racks, you know, so from ground all the way up to the top of the canopy and these wire racks are holding the hats and then also the woodwork. So I think it would be good to see maybe like a bed sheet that is clipped to the back of these because the more I look at the side wall of the canopy, especially this portion right here where it has like the window on the canopy, it is a little bit disruptive to the eye, you know? So we have the black wire of the racks and then there's the white side walls and then there's kind of like the clear portion here with, you know, like these white lines going through the clear portion. So it is, it's better than having nothing. I'll tell you that it is, it is definitely better than having like no sidewall at all, because then you'd be getting like this background here. And that's super disruptive to the eye. It's very hard to focus when there's like that much going on in the background. So I will say that it's better than nothing. But if you had a black bed sheet or a very, very dark bed sheet, and you just used like binder clips and attached it to this whole thing all the way around, I think that would do a, a tremendous job of making all these items just really, really stand out, especially if it's black, because you already have the black like checkered, like going on that just, just that pattern that the eye gets kind of sucked into. So um, if you manage to find a black sheet or some kind of tablecloth or something, binder clip it right to the back of these and then it's going to be just like this black background and your eye it's not going to have a choice it's going to focus on these items so that's the suggestion i would make for this display so we touched on this wire rack we touched on the hats to try to get something maybe clear or if you do have it set up like this i would turn it like inwards or you know i don't know how much of a pain it would be but maybe like diagonal pointing towards like just pull it a little bit to the left, you know, where it's facing more outwards towards the view that we have now. Um, and then this side of the booth, I think as far as displays goes, you're doing really good. Just uh, maybe darken this one up so that there's some contrast between the items and the, the display itself. And then the plaque uh, plastic baskets could probably be swapped out for just something that's a little bit more natural. But other than that, I would say you're doing really good. Okay. Second element we are going to talk about is vertical space. Um, a vertical space you're doing pretty well with at the booth. Obviously, this side is very, very good. You know, you have the hats. And then on the video, we saw there was like six or eight hats. So it looks like you had more displayed um, during the video. Let me see if there's a different, there's a different angle. Okay, there's this here. And then this is just the other side. Okay. So yeah, for the still, still frame photos, it looks like you just have like the four hats and, um, 
it looks like you got to the point where you have like six or eight, which is great because then it pretty much fills that whole thing from ground up to the top of the canopy. And then um, the actual wood burning wood over here. Yeah, again, you're you're pretty much doing, you know, most of the way down and you're covering all the way up to the top. I think there was a better angle over here. Yeah, here we go. So again, you're getting really, really good vertical coverage on this side of the booth. So you have the hats going top to bottom. You have uh, the wood going top to, you know, mostly down. And then the hats here, um, you know, you just didn't have as many at this show than the other shows, but you clearly had it displayed perfectly fine at the other show. So really, really excellent job with vertical space over here. We look towards the center of the canopy and you've used the top to hang your banner. Excellent. Um, it's a nice focal point. You know, when people come in, they know immediately who you are and what you do, you know, so um, very good job with the banner up top. And then over here, Really solid job with the displays. Let's switch pictures. We'll go over here. Okay. So um, again, you know, we kind of touched on this before with the video. I would probably tuck these guys on a short riser, maybe about the size that I have selected. So like a riser about that tall so that they start here and here. And then there were the few items that are just laid down, you know, so the coasters, I would keep those laid down. But then over here, you had light switch covers, which by the way, is pretty cool. The light switch covers, I would maybe prop up on kind of like what you're using right over here, just like these little stands. And um, I would have those facing, facing up, you know, so that you can just see the designs from a little bit more of a distance instead of you know having to be kind of right on top of the table to see what those designs are. And if you're using the riser to get the spoons higher, then having these propped up um, would still mean that the spoons are completely visible. So that's about it though. I, I would say you're doing good with verticality over here. Um, you have uh, three main displays on the booth, or I'm sorry, on the table. And they're doing a good job of offering um, a little bit of a interesting eye levels to look at. Okay, and so now the next thing we are gonna talk about is signage. So signage, I would say, is pretty solid at the booth. Um, over here, we'll zoom in so we can get a little closer. Okay, so over here, um, you have a sign that specifically covers what is on this display. So you have the earrings, and um, there's a couple of different prices for painted and not painted. And then you have the necklaces and studs. And then we'll switch views again. Okay, then you had a sign over here for, we'll zoom in. Okay, the keychains, lanyards, bookmarks, the themed coaster sets, and the themed spoon set. So you have all of that covered. All right, and we'll back out. Go back over here and zoom out. Okay, and then right down here, you have a couple of signs. So again, this is your social media sign for the QR code. I would utilize like the card table that you had in the video that we pointed out before, because now you can kind of see a couple of things just like laying out. You know, you got your cash box down there. You got a drink, your um, two different QR code signs, and then this... Um, you know, plastic container. So that is where, um, you know, the card table is really nice, especially with a little tablecloth over it, just to kind of have some room to tuck the random stuff away. And I do see your um, card reader right here too, by the way, with the cord. Um, okay, but for the signage, getting back to the signage, um, we have the two QR code signs right here. So one's kind of just down on the ground, you know, not ideal, but clearly, you know, you switch things up in the video. And then over on this side, I don't think we saw signage on this side of the booth. No. Okay, so nothing over here. So now, you know, it makes me wonder about the prices for, you know, the hats and then all of these I can't tell if that's a signage sticker on this one. You see it right here. I can I can pull in a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that is a signage sticker on that, but just first impressions. You know, making a quick first impression. 
uh, not seeing a whole lot of signage on this side of the booth, including the hats, I believe. I don't think there was anything about the hats either. No. Okay. So, you know, on the back side, you're doing good. On the right side, you're doing good. And then right here, that would just be the next focus. You know, get this side to match the other side. And then I would say you're doing a pretty good job with your signage. All right. So let's back out again. Okay, and the next element we're going to talk about is marketing. So marketing your business. You have two different banners. Well, I should say one banner and one runner. But um, you have your logo prominently displayed at your booth, which is always a great thing. And not only do you have the name of your business, but you also have what you do and offer at your booth on your banner and your runner. So that is fantastic. But... I understand that we do have the social thing down here, you know, so we have the social QR code down here, you know, no social links or anything on the banner. And this is something that it's, it's kind of like a, um, it's not mandatory, you know, so some people will put it on there and some people won't put it on their banners, but, uh, you know, consider having the social links on the banners as well, or just at least some kind of way for people to contact you. Maybe you have an email, like a business email. Maybe you have like a .com website, um, but just something to consider. Now, again, not mandatory because some people just want a clean, minimalistic look on their banners and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you go that route, I would make sure that there are business cards on the table. You know, so have business cards here, have business cards at your checkout area, um, I'm not sure what this little thing is here. Maybe that is like a stack of business cards right here. I can't tell what this is, but if that is some business cards, then okay, great. You got that covered, you know, but again, I would even, I would even have it on the table somewhere too. So, you know, no business cards out over here. I would make that kind of a next step for a marketing improvement. Okay. So. Let's go back out here to our main photo. Okay. And then let's cover pricing. So we've already touched on this a little bit, but we'll do a quick review one more time. So let's look at the individual tables here. So on this side, you're doing a really good job with your, with your pricing. It's very, very clear. I love the choice of the color on like the chalkboard. I like that it's pink for what the item is, it's green for how much it costs, and it's white if there is some note that they should know about the item. So excellent, excellent job with your pricing on this side of the booth. Again, you've done the same thing up here. We can take a closer look. So great job breaking this down. It is very, very obvious what everything costs on this table. So that is exactly what you're looking for. Um, you want to get it to the point where people don't even have to ask you how much something costs. That's, that's literally to the level that you want your booth to be is, um, you want it to be almost like a nonverbal thing where there's no guessing and they know exactly what everything costs. So then we'll slide over, going to slide over to this side. And then we kind of covered this already. So, um, the hats, and again, unless there are individual tags on items, I don't see pricing on this side of the booth, you know, so the hats, the woodwork, and then the hats, yeah, no, you know, no pricing, no pricing is visible. So just something to consider, you know, I would say you're doing a great job on the right side of the booth, bring it on over to the left side and it's really going to come full circle. Okay. So now we're going to dive into my favorite segment of the breakdown is colors, contrast, and texture. So let's focus on colors first. So obviously the tent, we have white, very clean, and we broke down the uh, side walls of the tent. Over here, the clear part, you can see just a little bit of that like, you know, window thing that they do with the canopies. Um, not playing a factor on this side because you have the table and the displays high enough to block that transparent part of the canopy. So again, like I said, I would put the black backing on this rack just to make it solid and um, make those items pop more. And then the banner has a green and a, you know, kind of a tan portion in the middle. 
And then that is carried on over to the tablecloth. All right, so you have like that, you know, tan beige color going on here. Very natural, which is nice because a lot of your items have to do with wood of course you know so i like that you've made that connection with the tablecloth and brought that over here uh, the displays we've talked about the color of the displays what you're looking for in display color is just contrast against the items that are being displayed on it okay so you've done a pretty solid job maybe a little bit of room for improvement on this one right here all right and then we talked about maybe a slightly darker stain on the keychain one, but now that we're a few feet back compared to the video, I don't think I have a problem with the color of the, the keychain rack because you can see there's pretty nice contrast there. Okay, so for colors, I would say that you're doing pretty solid. Um, this, instead of it being a solid color, it would be great if it was see-through instead of just the solid gray. Okay, now for the texture portion. I think you're doing a good job. You're sticking with solid colors, you know, so the displays are solids. We have the black display. We have this uh, tan or natural wood display. We got the uh, solid darker color wood for the keychains, chains. And then your tablecloths, you stuck with the solid color, which is always, always recommended. And then even your table runner is a solid color. Okay, so when we take a look at the items from this angle, uh, your items stand out, you know, even the, even the items that are somewhat close in color to like the table runner and the tablecloth, they still stand out. And if you had a texture here or some kind of a pattern, it's going to be a, a lot harder to focus on those items. So really good job with your texture all the way through because you've pretty much just stuck with solid colors all the way through. Okay. And then um, we'll take a look at the other side. Okay. And, you know, it's a wire rack with, you know, natural items like woodwork, but not a whole lot that you can do about that. Um, it's not like you're going to have 100 pound, you know, wood racks just so that it's, you know, also a natural uh, looking thing. So definitely no issue with the wire racks. Um, really good really good i'd say you're doing really good with like your your colors contrast and your texture i think is definitely a strong element at your booth um you, i think you've got a good understanding of just like how to display the items so that they stand out compared to the displays and compared to the canopy and things like that so really good job with that portion of the booth all right, so now let's talk about the strength of the theme. So obviously the theme is wood burning, right? So, you know, you have the wood burning section over here. You have a lot of um, items over here that are um, wood burning. And then even the hats themselves. Again, I would highly recommend checking out her social channels because the way that she makes her hats is awesome to watch. So um, all of her hat designs are you know, burnt into the fabric of the hat by hand, no patterns, nothing. It's literally just free form by hand. So yeah, her work is really, really cool. So as far as the strength of the theme goes, very, very good. Very good. If I look at the hats, I see a G here. And again, she is based in Georgia. So I would assume that is the Georgia Bulldog logo. Don't know if that G was, you know, burned in by hand or, you know, if all the patches were burned in by hand. So like, again, you know, just keep this in mind with how these are displayed because, you know, these could be like really cool elements, but they're kind of tucked away. They're kind of hidden. It's, it's dark in there because it's kind of a dark gray material, you know, so um, there's not a lot of natural light getting into there. So yeah, keep that in mind. With the strength of your theme though, I, I really like your work, you know, and it's very cool that it's done by hand. So I would have some sort of sign at your booth that says, you know, like, you know, wood burned art by hand or something like that, because like your videos on social media are really impressive, but you know, you'll have to start thinking about ways that you can kind of like incorporate that into your booth, you know, so that you can say, Hey, this is all done by hand. It's free form. And, um, just something like that, just some kind of signage that, you know, 
I don't want to say like gives yourself a pat on the back, but you should because you deserve it. And it's going to like make your items even more credible and more impressive if people if people had some idea of like how you make this stuff, I would even consider like having maybe even like an iPad or something. If you, if you expand out like your checkout table and it's more of like a card table, like in the video we saw before, um, I would even consider having like an iPod, iPad or something like propped up and, um, showing like the process of you like making this. Like, I think that would be really, really cool just to see that because I'm not sure if people understand, like, first of all, the talent and the patience and the accuracy, um, that goes into what you're doing. So, but I don't want to knock your, the, the strength of your theme. That's not to take away from your theme because your theme is very, very well established. I, I like you know, how everything is tied in, how it, you know, it's clearly all about wood burning. Um, those are just some ideas to kind of like really hammer it home and show people the effort that goes into your work. Okay, so now we're going to talk about accessibility. And if you haven't seen previous videos, what I mean by accessibility is basically just the ability for people to get into the booth, check out your items, uh, to be able to look at your items closely and to be able to get in and out of your booth safely. All right, so uh, let's go from left to right. And the first thing, of course, that we see is the racks with the, you know, large like feet or whatever you want to call it, like the, the bottoms, you know. Um, now, I don't know that there's a whole lot that you can do about this, but it it just it's a slight concern for you know the the tripping hazards as far as the tripping hazard goes but again you know it's a wire rack right so it's not like you can really push it further back because then you'd be basically blowing out the side of your canopy wall it just this is one of these situations where it kind of it is what it is you know what i mean and you know, if you really wanted to go to like some extreme or something, you could kind of take the green from, you know, your banner. It's kind of a bright, vibrant green and maybe like paint the bottom of these greens just so people like, you know, see them. But, you know, you, you'd kind of hope to give, <laughs> you kind of hope to give people the benefit of the doubt, the visitors, you know what I mean? But you know how things go. It's like, you know, when you count on people to uh, just be have a sense of awareness they they don't you know <laughs> so you know i'll touch on this but again i'll say that it's not too big of a deal because it's you you can't have this wire rack without these like feet or the bottoms you know what i mean so it is what it is over there um on the back side of your booth no issues at all again i would have the hats like you know pointed more like towards our view that we're getting from where this picture was taken just because of the fact that if they were pointed outwards, you wouldn't have to go that deep into the booth to see what they are. You know what I mean? So basically somebody wouldn't have to be standing like right here, right on top of where you're trying to sit for them to check out the hats, you know, so something to consider there, just angle these out. And, um, then people will be able to kind of check them out from like here instead of like right here. You know what I mean? Okay. So then this side of the booth, really good. I think people are able to check out the items from a pretty good distance. Again, we did touch on the spoons, having the spoons on a riser so they're a little bit higher up. And then also you'd be able to, let's let's look at the other view while I'm doing this. Okay, so these light switch coverings right here that are down here, we talked about having them propped up so that you'd be able to see them more from a distance instead of having to be like right on top of the table to look straight down at them. All right, so just something to consider for that. I'm going to go back to the other view because I did notice something here. Now, this this tablecloth is like, you know, fairly unsecured, you know, so you can you can kind of see it blown out considerably away from the table. So here's the leg of the table right here, and then here's the corner of the table. So we got this line going right here, and then this is way out here. You know, so um this could be a little bit of I don't want, I don't know if it's like a tripping hazard per se, but if somebody, you know, kind of like kick this or whatever, you don't want all your stuff on the table to go toppling down or whatever, things like that. So just have that a little bit more tucked in and that would be perfectly fine. But I do like that you pulled 
the, the tablecloth down close to the ground so that if you have a box or you know your storage totes or whatever they could be tucked under there and nobody would notice you know so i will say good job pulling them down at least but i would just uh, maybe use like a binder clip or something some some kind of way to secure this a little bit better but as far as accessibility goes i would say it's pretty good people um there is a nice you know wide area here where there could be a couple people looking at this stuff and there could be a couple people over here so um you know you're able to get a good cycle of people in and out of the booth okay and then the next thing is general use of space so we're going to cover a little bit of everything on this portion and we did talk about the vertical space at the booth which i would say is above average again i would take a couple of the baseball caps and maybe um, have one hanging here and then one hanging here just to again you know kind of create as many eye levels as you can at the booth um you have the tablecloth and your runner with your logo going down on this side. So you've got something to look at from um, all the way up here at your signage, all the way down to here at the bottom of your logo. So that's pretty good vertical space. Um, again, we touched on this side being very, very strong with the vertical space. You're using a lot of height over here. Maximizing your space. I don't know that you'd have to go super overboard with what you already have out there um sure that there's you know of course there's ways that you can get more out there but you know you also don't want to make the booth so crowded that it's like overwhelming for people you know so i would say that the booth i would consider it balanced this right here is a big area of improvement and I believe that we saw that improvement in the video from earlier where she had the card table and then I would just put, you know, a tablecloth over the card table to make it a little bit more clean and then uh, buy yourself some storage space for underneath the card table. So again, I think this was already addressed in a future booth setup. So again, yeah, the general use of space, I would say is pretty good at the booth. You have a wide variety of items, but yet it all falls under the one theme. So great job with that. Okay. And then the last thing here is the eye test. So when I talk about the eye test, I'm basically referring to the two or three seconds that a visitor of the show is walking by and what is your booth doing to pull them in? Okay. So what kind of instant impression are you making on the shoppers? I'd say that's pretty strong. I, I think it's pretty strong. We can and I, and I don't really like doing this too much, but we have a pretty good view here of a couple of other booths at this event. And I'm going to use this photo for that purpose. All right. So next door, you know, there's a couple of hats, like just laying on some totes and things like that. You know, not really ideal. You know what I mean? So the way that you have your hat, like on this mannequin head, I, I really like that. I, I think that's really, really nice, especially where you tucked it in here. It just flows really nice. But yeah, like if if I'm walking down this row of booths, I think that you've done like a nice job here. I think that you've established your theme. People know, like people are going to are going to know what to expect within the booth just by, you know, looking at your logo first of all, wood burned art, right? And then by looking at the first few items, they can tell what's going on. So that is important too. If you start to kind of branch out into too many different directions at a booth, it doesn't really have an identity anymore, you know, and people don't really know like what they're stopping for, you know, so why should I even stop for a booth if I don't even know what it, what it is, like what direction it has, you know? So that's a really important element to keep in the back of your mind when you're constructing your booth is you want to have that established theme and um, you want to be like the go-to person for whatever you happen to be doing at that craft fair okay so if you're doing wood burned art you want to be the wood burned art person if you're doing tumblers you know candles think of like what you make and you want to basically make your booth into like the place to stop. I know that vendors get frustrated when they go to a craft fair and there's like two or three vendors or maybe even more who make similar things. So like say, say for example, if you do 
um, if you make candles. It can be frustrating to look around and see three or four other candle people. But when you construct your booth and when you're designing your booth, like I want you to actually assume that that's going to happen at every craft fair and make yours like the candle booth or the wood burned art booth. You know what I mean? So just kind of keep that in mind, you know, as far as how you're putting your booth together think about the shoppers as they're walking by you know how it goes you know there's there's people that are kind of browsing you know and i th- i would say a good portion of the crowd is kind of just you know stumbling along browsing along you know give them that reason to stop you know just just give them that reason to pause even for just a moment because that might be all it takes you know like i said the eye test is really just that 2 to 3 seconds where they're walking past your 10 foot wide booth you know so what is that 3 or 4 steps And then are they going to keep walking or are they going to stop? This booth, I think, is doing a really good job at making people pause. It's got really, really interesting items. Um, The... You've you've showcased your items all the way up to the very front of your canopy, which is important too. Um, again, you know, not to look next door or anything, but you know, there's some items that are kind of pushed far back, and it's like, why? You know, why why would you want to do that? You know, you want to get your stuff as far far up front as you can. So. Um, I hope this video has helped. If you've stuck around with me this long, thank you so much for sticking around. And again, please check out all of the social media links for for Ashlyn. Um, Again, she does awesome, awesome work on her social media um, apps or (laughs) sites or whatever you want to call them. Really interesting to see how this all gets created. So definitely check that out. If you would like to have your booth reviewed and featured in one of these videos, check out all the links that I have shown here and then also in the description below. And we'll be able to work together on a booth review. They are free. I don't charge anything for them. Um, They are starting to get into a lengthy wait list, so please be patient with me. But um, again, this is a lot of fun for me to do, and I hope that it helps not just only the vendor whose booth I'm reviewing, but for everybody, you know, when I go through these 10 different stages, think about how it impacts your booth and where you could see improvement in your booth. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out all of the other booth reviews, be sure to click the playlist up above and you'll be able to check out every booth review that I've ever done. Have yourself a great day, everybody.